All right, let's go ahead and read the problem, and then I'm going to get right to it. Okay, so uh, an object is moving along the x-axis with an acceleration given by the function a of t is equal to 4, uh, 4 t plus 7 meters per second squared. At time is equal to zero, the object is at x equals 6 meters, and it's moving at uh, 2 meters per second. Okay. How fast will the object be traveling when the time is equal to 4 seconds? Okay, And where will the object be at uh, time um, is equal to 4 seconds? So we have two questions here. How fast Okay, at t is equal to 4? And where is this object going to be? So this is the position at uh, t is equal to 4 seconds. All right. So this is a pretty classic type of um, physics problem. Certainly something that I wouldn't... Um, not be surprised that you would see this on an AP physics exam. So, I mean, if you're taking AP physics, it's the type of thing that you need to be familiar with. So if you want to pause the video and work on it for a couple minutes, I would say this problem will probably take, um, yeah, it'll probably take a good maybe 10 minutes to do. I mean, you're going to have to do a decent amount of calculus and number crunching. But if you want to get your calculator out and do this, we can compare notes. But uh, with that being said, let's get right into the problem. All right, so basically the main idea here is we have to understand in physics uh, functions with respect to time, okay? So you have uh, position, velocity, and acceleration, okay? So if we have a position function, let's just say that's y, okay? If we take the first derivative of that, we have our velocity function, okay? If we take the derivative again of the velocity function or y prime, okay, the second derivative of the position function, we have our acceleration function, okay? This should be um, some basic concepts that you should already know. Now, again, we are talking about calculus, and you're going to need to know how to find the derivative. Um, so, you know, if you're already kind of lost with the math, then, you know, uh, you're certainly probably not at the AP physics level. You might be just taking uh, non-calculus-based physics, but stick around anyways. You'll learn a little something. Okay, so position, velocity and acceleration. So what if I have the acceleration function? How can I get back to the velocity function? So let's just, you know, before I even go that, go there, if I give you the position function, okay, if I give you the position function with respect to time, I can find the velocity function by just taking the uh, first derivative of that. And then if I take a derivative of the velocity function, again, I can uh, get to the acceleration function. So this is taking the derivative, I can move this way. But if I have, if I give you the acceleration function and I want to get to back to the velocity function, well, what do I need to do? Well, you got to integrate, okay? So if I integrate, if I find the integral of the acceleration um, function, I get back to the velocity function. And then if I integrate the velocity function, I can get back to the position function. So this is the main idea uh, behind uh, this uh, particular problem. You got to know these uh, relationships because we have questions uh, related to position and velocity. Okay, if you're, let's go back to our problem. Okay, here, how fast? Okay, so we're talking about velocity here. So we're going to need a velocity function. And where will the object be? Well, this is position. So I'm going to need that position function and velocity function but I'm given the what? Well, I'm given the acceleration function, all right? So uh, we're gonna have to use this relationship right here, acceleration, velocity, position, and how we can go between the acceleration, velocity, and position functions, uh, either if I have the position function or the acceleration function, yeah, and hopefully you get the idea. Okay, so if you understand this, then that's uh, excellent, all right? But now we're gonna have to actually uh, apply some calculus and that's everyone's favorite topic, right? All right, so here we go. Basic physics, well, not basic physics. This is for fairly sophisticated, but we're talking about calculus space, college level physics. I mean, if you pass the AP exam, you're gonna get credit for calculus based physics, which physics, which is pretty impressive. All right, so here, the velocity function, V of T, the velocity function with respect to time, I can find that if, uh, but I have to, if I have the acceleration function with respect to time, okay, if I integrate this, it's equivalent to the velocity function. So that's, you know, uh, basically the main idea, right? So do I have that acceleration function 
uh, with respect to time. Okay, was that given to me? Yes. Remember, in the uh, original prom, I was given uh, A's of T, right, the acceleration um, with uh, T, okay, as the input time as 4T plus 7, okay? And, of course, this is going to be meters per second squared, which is acceleration. So we're going to go ahead and uh, integrate this acceleration function with respect to time, and I will get back to my velocity function. Okay, so here you got to know, again, you got to know how to integrate, all right? So uh, very simple when I do this, this 4T, I'm going to add, this is T to the first, that's going to be T squared, I'm going to divide by 2, that's going to give me 2T squared, and then here I'm going to have uh, plus 7T, okay? Again, if you're, if you're not understanding um, how this goes to this, well, then you need to review the, the calculus aspect of your physics exam, okay? So, or physics course. So remember, a couple things here. One, you got to understand this relationship right here, position, velocity, and acceleration. And then you got to understand calculus, okay? All right, so anyways, we have this uh, indefinite integral right here, 2t squared plus 7t plus our constant, okay? So we have to figure out what our constant is when you... Uh, integrate, we have this uh, plus C, so I need that C, okay? So how can I find that C, that constant? Well, if you recall, okay, right back in this problem here, we have velocity now, we have a velocity function. It said uh, right here, and when the time was zero, we have some position information. The object is at X equals six meters, so we have that position. We're gonna need this later in the problem. But we also have a velocity at time is equal to zero. Uh, that is, uh, this object is moving at two meters per second. Okay, I'm going to need that now to get my constant. All right, so let's go back here. So uh, when the time is zero, okay, when the time is zero, this object is moving at two meters per second. So here, okay, if I plug in zero to this function, and replace this, these, uh, the time with zero, we can see that C will be equal to two. Okay, so you need to understand that. This is not trivial because this right here is not gonna be enough for the velocity uh, function with respect to time. So here is the complete uh, velocity uh, function, okay, V of T. And now uh, we can go ahead and answer that uh, first question in the problem. How fast is this object moving at uh, t is equal to four seconds? Let's go back over here and remember the problem. Okay, here it is right here. How fast will the object be moving at time is equal to four seconds? All right, so I need to find v of, of uh, four. Okay, uh, but of course I need that velocity function. Okay, so I'm going to plug in four seconds uh, into my velocity function here, v of t and it will tell me the answer, okay? So here it is, uh, uh, V of T, of course, T is in seconds. V of four, just gonna plug in four right here, basic algebra, I do all this number crunching, you get 62 meters per second, okay? Uh, be very careful with the units of measure here. Uh, we're talking about meters and seconds, so meters per second is a unit of measure uh, for velocity, okay? So if you got that right, very, very good, that's excellent. Now let's move on to that second part of the question. And the second uh, part of this question is where will the object be at uh, t is equal to four seconds? So now I need position, okay? So uh, let's just go back over here. Remember I took that acceleration function, I integrated and I was able to get that velocity function v of t, okay? Well, I'm gonna have to integrate again to get that position function x of t. So back to the calculus. Let's go back over here. All right, so our position function with respect to time is going to be equal to uh, the integral of the velocity uh, function. So if I got my velocity function here, I integrate it, I'll get back to uh, the position function. So I just found that velocity function. It is 2t squared plus 7t plus 2. Now I'm going to integrate that with respect to time, and when I do that, I end up with my position function, all right? So that's gonna be x of t, and uh, it's gonna be 2 thirds t squared, or t cubed, plus 7 halves t squared, plus 2t, plus our 
constant right here. Now, again, if you're not understanding how uh, this integration is working, you're going to have to go back and brush up on your calculus. But I assume most of you out there that are at uh, AP uh, physics level are, are uh, able to keep up with me in terms of the calculus, right? Now, if you are like, hmm, I'm kind of a little bit confused right at this part, then you need to brush up on your calculus so you can handle the math for these physics problems. All right, but here, again, we have our constant. We're going to have to figure that constant out. Now, again, going back to the problem, remember um, we had some information that the, uh, that when the time was zero, that uh, the position of the object was at six meters. Let's go back and just review that real quick because we're going to need that. Okay. So um, at time is zero, okay, the object is at six meters. Okay. So we need that to get our constant. All right. So just want to make sure that, you know, we're able to keep up with all this information, all these little details in the prom. All right, so the position when the time is zero is at six meters. So again, if I plug in zero for my time, it's gonna leave me with six as my constant. Okay, so C is equal to six. So this right here is the full position function. Okay, so I don't have C, I have six now. And now I can answer that last question. What's the position? at uh, time is equal to four seconds. So I've got my full position function right here, x of t. So I'm just gonna plug in four, uh, uh, for, the, for t, that's four seconds. And when I do all this lovely number crunching, again, you know, you're gonna need your calculator, obviously, for this problem. Um, just to make life easy on yourself, you'll see that the position at time uh, four, at, at four seconds is uh, the position of the object at four seconds is 112.6, roughly. Uh, meters. Okay, so this is the final answer. Okay, so we have the position is 112.6 meters. Okay, at time is equal to four seconds. Okay, and then over here, the velocity at uh, time is equal to four seconds was 62 meters per second. Okay, uh, hopefully this little problem um, helped you review some of the things that you're going to encounter on your AP physics exam. I you know I would. Uh, you know, wish you nothing more than a five. I mean, wish you all the best so you can get a five. But even if you get a four, that's still awesome. Or even three, as long as you pass this thing, that's pretty impressive. So if this video helped you out in some small way, please consider smashing that like button. That definitely helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully you'll consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for a very long time. I have a thousand plus uh, math videos, basic to advanced math, and I'm going to be doing more uh, uh, videos in the area of calculus and, you know, physics, calculus-based physics, etc., uh, just to help out uh, those of you out there. But um, anyways, I definitely wish you all the best on your AP physics exam. Thank you for your time and have a great day.